You're now hopefully starting to understand just how important fire safety is, not only for your own life and property, but also that of your mates and fellow students. The best way to stay safe from fire is to avoid having one in the first place. And avoiding fire uh, in your accommodation is simple. The next clip highlights some of the key fire hazards and how you can avoid them. Hi, you all right? Hiya, my name is Paul Young. I'm a firefighter based with Tyneware Fire and Rescue Service. Right. A sharp increase in student fires lately, what we're offering is a free home fire safety check. It's a 10 to 15 minute service, totally free. All we're going to do is fit some ones if required and offer some fire safety advice tailored to your needs. Right, okay. Great. Yep. First of all, I've noticed you've got no smoke alarm. We would definitely recommend having a smoke alarm next to your door, giving you access to your, one of your main means of escape. Right. The other thing I've noticed as well is you've got quite um, a few bits of oak post. We recommend putting that to one side yeah. just in case there was a fire. Paper, that sort of material increases the, uh, the speed of fire spread and it can be quite dangerous. So just a few little housekeeping points right. before we get started. Is okay to have a quick check upstairs? Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Great, after you. Yeah, and it's good to see that your stairway is clear, that like you made means of escape. It's kept clear all the time, so that's, uh, that's very positive. Okay. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is smoke bombs. How do you have working smoke bombs on the property? Uh, yeah, we've got two. We've got one there and there's uh, one out in the hallway as well. Brilliant. Now they're hardwired, which means we're going to off your mains electricity. Now we do have a backup battery as well, right. just in case there's a power cut. Now within the right place, what you recommend with smoke alarms is that you test them once a week. If the smoke alarms go off, what do you know what to do in the, in the event of a fire? It's called an escape plan. Right. I um, don't really know what to do now. Okay, I'm going to talk you through what to do. First thing we always say is, don't panic. Right. Easier said than done if there is a fire. However, if it does happen, no matter how careful you are, it can happen. You don't want to be jumping out windows. I've had lots of occasions where people have panicked to jump out the windows. Right. What you want to be doing is straight out the front door or straight out the back door. Utilise your means of escape. If you hear the alarm go off in the middle of the night, always assume that there is a fire right. and look to be getting out. If your door's closed, put your hand on the back of the door. If it's warm, there's a good chance there's a fire on the other side. Right. You don't want to grab the hand in case it's hot. Burn your hand. Right, okay. Relative on the house, shout fire, straight out the exit. Once you get out, call the fire service out, 999, so if you've got a mobile phone handy, now's your time to use it, right. otherwise look at your neighbours or get the nearest phone box. Right, okay. Never assume that someone else has called the fire service. Finally stay out. We never tell people to go back into a fire, doesn't matter what's left in there, never ever go back in. So once you're out, stay out. If you're trapped in your room, for whatever reason, the worst case scenario, you're in your bedroom, the fire's directly outside the door, again, we wouldn't suggest jumping out the window. That would be your absolute worst case scenario, absolute last option. Right. If that happens, just stay put. If your doors are closed, now in here you've got decent doors. Do they close properly? Um, yeah, most of them do, yeah. Now your door's going to hold back fire for at least 20 minutes. So even if the fire's on the other side, in the corridor, it's going to hold back smoke for about 20 minutes. Right, what we're going to do now is just have a quick look around your flat, identify any potential fire hazards that you may have. Right, okay, let's go. Okay, after you. Right. Yeah, right, the first thing I've noticed is that um, there's cigarettes. Do you smoke yourself? Um, I do, yeah, unfortunately. Right, do you ever smoke in bed? Um, sometimes, yeah, sometimes. Okay, now it's not our job to stop you smoking. All I'm going to do is highlight the dangers that may be involved with cigarettes, especially in student properties. Right, okay. Now, the first thing I've noticed is you don't actually use a proper ashtray. No, just cups and things. Yeah, what we'd recommend is obviously getting yourself a decent ashtray. Um, obviously something like that, or something improvised that can't catch fire. You don't right. know how it's going to react. Second of all, we would strongly, strongly recommend against your smoking in bed. Right. If you're smoking in bed and you fall asleep and the cigarette was to fall in the duvet, or even on the carpet, you could be looking at quite a significant fire risk and also risk to your, uh, to your life and also the ones in the, in the flat as well. Right, okay. What do you do with your ashtray at the end of an evening? Um, normally just leave it till the next morning. Right. We would recommend putting a little bit of water in the bottom, making right. sure it's definitely out, because the problem with cigarettes is it can smoulder for a long time. Right. Now, I have had fires in the past where people have thought the cigarettes are out, and in fact they're smouldered, it's actually caused a fire later on. So, a little bit of water in the bottom. Where about to empty it? Um, normally just into the bin in the kitchen. Right, again, we would recommend against that things like kitchen bins or such as a wastebasket down there, they can be full of combustible materials. If you put, put uh, empty ashtray into there, right. it can catch fire. Again, it might not happen immediately, but it can smoulder for a long time. 
right. there is a fire risk there. So just a few things to be aware of, but certainly I'll be aware of uh, smoking in bed. Okay, now the next thing I've noticed is the electrics. Now it's not uncommon in student flats to see overloading electrics. And what we've got here is sort of quite a common, uh, common situation, but one that right. can be avoided. Okay. Now what we've got, we've got lots of plugs going into one socket. Now, lots of plugs in one socket can cause overloading, which if you're unlucky, can uh, sometimes cause fire. Right. Now, you've got a strip adapter there. Now what we recommend is you put one plug per socket. Right, okay. Now at the minute you've got the old style block adapters. Now block adapters, like that, they're quite a few years old, they tend not to be fused. And again, they can overheat and cause a fire that way. So what I look at with those plugs is looking at what's not being used, make sure you unplug it. Right, okay. Um, like I said, I do that. It's not going to mean to cause a fire, but it's something I'll be looking at doing sooner rather than later. Right, okay. Certainly with there. Uh, with that amount of plugs in one place. Right. The other thing I see quite a lot of as well is televisions left on standby. Now, what do you do with your TV just before you go to bed? Uh, normally just leave it on standby, as you say, yeah. Right, that little red light uses just as much electricity as the rest of your screen. Now, if it's left on standby for a long time, it can burn out. And I have seen examples where TVs are caused by that way. Right, okay. You know, if you pop in the toilet or you're making a cup of tea, by all means, standby is fine. But if you're going to university or you're going to sleep for the night, make sure it's either turned off at the front or if you can, turn off the wall, right, even okay. better. Yep. Okay. Things like sky boxes, digi boxes are designed to power down, but things like t TVs especially, best not leave them on standby, so just make sure you turn them off. The other thing I have noticed, is you've got your extension lead running across the floor. Right. Again, it's not so much of a problem now, but if you were to have a fire in the middle of the night, we need to get out quickly, it could be a trip hazard. So it's just something to be aware of, keeping cables and wires out of the way wherever possible. Right, okay. Notice you've got an electric heater. Do you use that electric heater much for, for drying clothes? Oh, uh, we do, yeah. It's cheaper than our radiators. So. Electric heaters are fine, but only if there's a gap left between. Now, what we recommend that like heaters, that should ideally be placed on the floor. Right. So okay. have a one meter gap in front of it as well. So things like drying clothes or putting clothes near it, it can't catch fire if you're really unlucky. So our main cause of fire, especially with the students, is fires in the kitchen. So right. if you'd like to go through the kitchen. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Now I really want to talk about the potential of fires in the kitchen. Right. Kitchen fires are almost common cause of fires in Tynaweir. In fact, nationally, 33% of 18 to 24 year old deaths in fires occur in the kitchen, result of careless cooking or careless disposal of hot materials. Now do you use a chip pan? Uh, I do, it's right there. Yeah. Right, we strongly, strongly recommend getting rid of your chip pan. Right. Uh, chip pan fires still occur quite a lot. If they do happen, they tend to be very serious. At the very least, you'll be looking at losing your kitchen, more serious, doing yourself serious harm, or uh, potentially losing your life. Right, okay. So we'd strongly, strongly recommend getting rid of your chip pan as soon as possible. Right. Other hands I've noticed, you've got a tea towel close to your cooker. Right. Again, this can go up if you're not careful. It can catch fire, so it's a general point of hygiene, general housekeeping, just keep it away. Would you mind if I checked out your grill? No, that's fine, have a look. Now, what we tend to find quite often in student properties, in shared uh, halls, places like that, is you get quite a lot of grill fires. So a perfect example there. What we'll have is, you'll come along, use your grill. Next person comes along, use the grill. By the time the third or fourth person uses it, you've actually built up a layer of fat across the bottom. If you're real lucky, you come along, use it, you start smoking off, could catch fire. So it's just something to be aware of again. General housekeeper, making sure the grill's tidy, making sure everyone in your house does their bit to keep it tidy as well. Right, okay. Now, although most of our fires start in the kitchen, most of our serious fires in the kitchen occur between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. in the morning, which suggests that normally there's normally a bit of alcohol involved. You ever come in after a night out and decided to cook? Uh, yeah, quite often, yeah. All right. Again, it's something we'd strongly, strongly recommend you don't do. If you've had a few drinks, by all means, get a takeaway, come in. The last thing you want to be doing is cooking. Right. Okay, quite a lot of careless fires, people come in, even if it's just beans on toast, yeah. five people come in, even a few bits of bread under the grill, they've come in, put it on, fallen asleep in the living room, or they've got distracted. I've had fires started that way. So it's very important, even if you had a few drinks, just not even think about cooking. Right, okay. With your washing machine in the corner, do you ever put a wash on just before you go to bed? Quite often, yeah, quite often. Okay, it's again, it's something we suggest that people get away from in case there is a fault and it catches fire. 
If it was to happen now, we'd be alert. Could have responded to it straight away. However, through the night, you're looking at getting smoky and setting the alarms off before you're aware of it. Right. However, apart from that, I have noticed the kitchen's actually quite clean, very tidy. Also, using their uh, grills, alternative uh, forms as well. Yeah. Is that your other means of ex escape? It is, yeah. So if I went down there, I'd be straight out the back door into the yard. You would, yeah. Right, you've got that blocked. Now again, if there was to be a fire right now, we'd know to step over it. Right. If there was a fire through the night, or your housemates alerted you to a fire and it was dark, again, it could seriously uh, decrease the chances of getting how quickly you could trip over it, or people might not be aware of it. So wherever possible, keep your escapes as clear as possible, front and back. Right. The other thing I see quite a lot of is bikes being stored in the back. In that case, try and keep them as clear as possible. Right, okay. Just before I leave the kitchen, can I ask, do you have a wheelie bin? Yeah, we've got two, yeah. Uh... Especially around this area, especially around student areas such as Heaton, Sandyford, Jesmond, we're getting quite a lot of wheelie bin fires, and it's actually on the increase. Can I ask what you do with your wheelie bin on bin day? Um, well, it's just actually just out in the back alley, so yeah. we just leave it there all the time. Yeah. Our advice is, take it out on bin day, bring it back in as soon as possible. If you know you're going to be away, have a word with your neighbour, see if they can bring it in for you. Right, okay. Now, there's two reasons for that. First of all, we're getting quite a lot of wheelie bin fires. If it's against your fence, it can spread the fence. If it's against your house, again, it could be a fire if the fire can spread. People are coming along, as a joke, setting fire to wheelie bins. Don't give them that opportunity by leaving out in the alley. The other reason, if a wheelie bin's out in the alley, in terms of crime, it can be used to jump over the fence and gain access to your property. If it's stored inside and stored securely, potential criminals, thieves, won't have that opportunity. So take it out and make sure you bring it back in on Bindi. Try not to leave it out in the alleyway wherever possible. Right, okay. Okay, we're just going to go through your bedroom now, if that's alright. That's fine. Okay, again, you know, very tidy. I notice you've got your strip of that there, which is fantastic. One thing we do tend to see in university properties is that electrics are left on for a long period of time, so it's just something you might want to consider right, right. turning it off when you're not around. More to save yourself money than there. Uh, any sort of major fire hazard. Right, okay. But again, very tidy, you've got your means of escape there. Very quick. Like I said, I wouldn't jump out the window unless it was absolute sort of last case scenario. Right. Um, one thing I have noticed, however, hair straighteners, are they your hair straighteners? They are, yeah. Right. We had an incident not too long, um, not too far from here actually, where hair straighteners are left on a bed. Girls are straightening the hair, we're not the last on Osborne Road. Girls. They'd actually caught fire. Luckily no one was in, but it was quite a serious fire. Right. started because of hair straighteners left on the bed. So if you are using them, now they do get hot very, very quickly. I wouldn't leave them on the floor either. Because like that, you can't jam your feet in them. Or one of your flatmates can come across and uh, get a some nasty burn in the foot. Right. Put on a heat proof mat. Make sure it's uh, away from your carpet as well. Let them cool down that way. So it should come with a mat. If not, non-flammable surface. Right, okay. Yeah. So just something to be aware of. Right, the last thing I want to do is just pop the smoke alarm up downstairs. Right, okay. Make sure your means of escape are uh, protected. In the meantime, if you think of any questions, feel free to ask. Right, I'll do.